Well, I'd say this, it's one month's data. And what I see in it is the wage increase was slightly less than the market expected. The participation rate was less strong. And so the bullish side of the equation is that uh, this may be a slight precursor of the labor market starting to weaken a bit, which is of course necessary if central banks are to back off uh, tightening policy down the road. When we talk about inflation and wages, inflation are, is of course way ahead of wages. And that's true not only in the US, it's true everywhere. But you have to remember if inflation, uh, if wage inflation uh, is ahead of headline inflation, then what you're absolutely sure is the central banks are going to go on tightening and could go on tightening until you're in a recession. So that one cuts both ways. And I would say you have to pay attention not to the classic economic analysis when you come to looking at wages. Sure, you have to compare the increase in wages to the increase in inflation. That's a very key figure. But you also have to remember that households are very wealthy at the moment. And households have large stocks of excess savings, which were accumulated during the COVID period. So what you really want is for wages to remain reasonably moderate behind inflation, but for this not to trigger disruption in the labor market because households have, to have got cushions which would allow them to, to ride that out. That would be the ideal scenario. And uh, the, the proof of the pudding is not there yet, Jeff, as you well know. When we've talked in the past, you've um, charted, I think, uh, charted out for us a, a world in which we continue to see economic weakness and momentum uh, slowing and, and markets having to finally take on board the consequences of that. Have you seen anything in the recent data to disabuse you of that idea that ultimately economies get weaker from here on in and governments and central banks respond inappropriately? Yes, I've seen quite a lot of data which points in both directions. Um, everybody talks about recession. Very few people define recession. I define recession as a loss of 2 or 3% of all of the jobs uh, in the country concerned. Where I am seeing things we have to keep our eyes on and which may give different outcomes in different parts of the world is the energy and Russian situation in Europe. The Ukrainian gas pipeline goes down for maintenance this week. Putin may not bring it back on stream. The Nord Stream 1 gas line is pumping at approximately 35% of its capacity. There's no sign Putin wants to bring it back on stream. So Europe may be hit by an energy crisis all of its own, which produces the war session, the recession caused by war, which we've talked about. Japan is now pumping approximately 18% of GDP in fiscal spending into its economy. Whether it has a recession or not, you can be sure of one thing, you and I are not going to hear about it. So Japan is not on that recessionary rota. I don't think Japan, uh, sorry, that should be China. Japan is not on the recessionary rota. And the reason for that is it's coming out of COVID restrictions. It has huge pent up savings among households. And despite the terrible assassination over the weekend, you're quite likely to see reasonably by Japanese standards growth. So that leaves us with the question mark, which we've been talking about how the wage and, and pr prices and how the wealth stock of wealth uh, and pent up savings plays out in the United States. So what I would say has changed since we talked on, uh, on June 7th is that you can now make the detailed prognostications for different parts of the world, which are themselves very different from the simply uh, blanket recession picture.